I'm gonna head over and start the next part of our presentation, which is our market update. So I know we are in April, but right now I'm only showing the February results because it takes about two weeks for all of the markets to close. Uh, but what I'll ask you guys to focus on when we get to some of these uh, markets is the pending sales, because the pending sales is our closest leading indicator of what closed sales will be next month. Uh, so this is the roll up for all of Texas. So last month's sales were down 15% uh, year over year. Uh, the average sales price was up and the median sales price was up, but just barely. We had uh, one major market that took down the average sales price uh, uh, in Texas. What market was that? Austin. It was Austin. Austin took the biggest hit in terms of uh, reduction in year over year sales prices. Uh, Houston was down as well. They were down 2.4%, uh, the average price in Houston, 385,000. Uh, closed sales down 23%, but pending sales down only 11%, which is actually something to get excited about and celebrate because as we were ending out 2022, uh, sales were down in some cases 30% year over year over the last uh, three plus months of 2022. And even January was pretty rough uh, for most of Texas as well. Where's everyone going? Um, well, everyone is turning their would be for sale sign into a or lease sign. So we have a lot of accidental landlords out there right now. Um, and uh, we're gonna continue to see those. Uh, lease <coughs> number of uh, properties that were leased in the Houston MLS up 12%, lease price up 11%. So some of the uh, landlords in the room have been able to appreciate that uh, price growth over the last um, year. Uh, and the number of new lease listings. So all of those folks just turned their for sale sign into a for lease sign. Uh, Houston has added another 900 units for lease. Uh, Dallas had the best month of all all of the major markets in Texas. Their average sales price was up 4% to 473,000. Uh, on, the only market where closed sales were up was in Dallas. Uh, they were up by 1%, which is pretty big. Again, considering that the last several months of 2022, they were down up to 30% throughout Texas. Pending sales up 5%, which again, another big deal. That means uh, we'll probably see positive numbers in DFW for closed sales next month. Leases are up 19%, lease price is up 5%. In San Antonio, uh, the average sales price in San Antonio up 2%, uh, but the closed sales were down 17% year over year, pending sales down 25%. Uh, so San Antonio is also still struggling. A lot of folks, again, uh, moving into the lease category, leases were up 15% year over year. For the Austin market, oh, this hurts. Oh. Um, uh, year over year sales price down 11%. Now I will uh, tell you that um, as you know, we, we do this um, kind of financial report on all of our properties um, uh, every month and I update all of the values. And I remember in May, June of 2022, um, kind of reviewing that and thinking something about this just doesn't feel right. Um, it just, it, it, it feels too good to be true. It was kind of one of those moments. So I think, um, you know, we had a lot of what I'll call paper gains uh, in 2022. And I think in, in the Austin market specifically, we're gonna be giving back uh, many of those. Uh, in fact, uh, the Wall Street Journal just did um, um, an article uh, last week. It was basically a nation divided. So it basically said everything um, uh, west of Texas, the values were down, in some cases down by 10% or more. Everything in Texas and east of Texas, values were up year over year, in some cases in the Florida markets, uh, in Miami, for example, up like 10 to 13%. The only uh, major city in Texas that, did, that bucked the trend was Austin. Uh, so Austin uh, sided with the, um, uh, with the West Coast. Uh, so that was kind of a, kind of a bummer. Uh, but uh, pending, uh, I'm sorry, closed sales last month down 17%. I got to tell you that that should be something that we're celebrating again, because in some cases uh, in 2022, towards the end, we were seeing sales down over 30% uh, year over year. Uh, pending sales are down. 
uh, but they're not down as much as uh, uh, as we saw it or as we saw it uh, at the towards the end of last year. Uh, so with those pending sales, I don't want to say they're coming back up because they're still not where we were at the same time last year. Uh, but they're still in a, in a at a pretty good pace. Um, so I'm I'm thinking that this uh, the prices being down year over year will probably start to slow down and probably start to slow down as we hit some of the summer selling months. Uh, especially, you know, I you know I I, I I never thought in my you know 20 years investing in real estate that the success of my uh, real estate portfolio was going to be based on inflation. Um, never really thought about that because historically when we've been managing inflation, it has just been little you know, ups and downs here and there, little ups and downs here and there. Obviously we went to zero um, uh, for the Fed funds rate through 2020 and 2021 and uh, part of 20, and, and uh, just a very small part of 2022. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, the success of your next flip, right, uh, is and, and some of these short-term things, right? The 10-minute, 10 10-minute 10 rule, right? The 10-month rule, the 10-year rule, um, the 10-minute uh, and the 10-month or six-month for a buy, fix, and flip will very much be contingent upon what these you know next month's inflation numbers are, and um, and and the Fed and what the Fed decides to do about it. Now, I will say we got a little bit of a bump in the real estate market over the last month. What gave us that big bump in the real estate market? I also never thought, oh, a bank failure would actually help us out. But what happened when the bank failed? Interest rates went down, right? So it's like, oh, well, that's fantastic. So a lot of so that so if you ask people who are in the mortgage industry, they got a lot more applications uh, uh, right after that. And so probably a lot of the realtors in the room have uh, been seeing a. Um, more showings on their properties or have had more buyers who are interested in buying now because they feel like all right we got a we got the pressure relief valve, valve just let go uh, with a couple of banks failing and a couple of banks almost failing uh, and then with the fed uh, uh, chairman powell saying all right instead of a half point increase we're going to stick with a quarter point we're going to we told you guys it's going to be a quarter we're going to stick with a quarter even though banks are starting to fail because we we've, we've the fed's broken something now right it's like and and that would be i don't know the confidence in the entire Higher banking system in America, right? Which is a pretty big deal. Uh, but um, uh, the Treasury Sh Secretary Yellen is handling that side of the house, and Powell is handle handling the inflation side of the house. Although I think there's a there's a good line of communication there, which again helps us in uh, in the real estate market. So uh, just wanted to share some of those market updates with you. And